you can, you can jump into it. But it's a tight little punch. A lot of people use their arm. That's how I broke my hand against Bobby Lawler. I went like this, and then that punch here. If you want to be in tight, just like a straight right, it's all hips. It's just like swinging a baseball bat. You want everything in tight. So my power's here. I want to keep this hand. You want to release that punch from as close as you can to your chin. So from here, and then elbow up and shot, put it out right there. These two knuckles right on the spot. So yeah, the best, the best way is to roll and then come into it. You roll and then I'm, I'm right here. Jump right into it. Just like the best way to throw across is sometimes roll it back. Step it back in. Roll forward. Look here. Same thing if I'm here and I want to clear the new angle. But I step, but I'm punching as I step down like you want to stomp down on the hook. And you can even use it as like a to set up your right hand, where I'm actually kind of jumping away from you to create this new angle. Nice. Talk to us about that, that pivot where you're catching it. Yeah, all, all footwork, you're trying to land the punch, but it's more, it's more so to set up the right. So I'm here, and I'm stepping right to create a new angle. I'm here, step, touch. So it's all about angle. You got the biggest, the biggest one is that I like it thrown after a cross. So you throw a cross, I've cocked this shoulder a bit. So you throw from here, you gotta cock that shoulder back, so it's real good to cross. You know, it's the core of my body, up, and now I can jump into it. Do you ever just go off the other side slip, like over the side? I actually, when I knocked that turn mark, I pawed my hand out there. I just pawed it, pawed it, pawed it, but I was always doing it sitting behind. So, yeah, you somehow have to get the shoulder cocked back. Another real good way of doing it is fakes. Where I want you, everybody respects this right hand, you fake the right. Right there, you don't even have to throw it. Right All I'm doing is rotating my shoulders. Right there. Same thing with the cross. I'm going to throw my cross out here. Turning right into it. Nice. Talk to some more about the other feints that you use while fighting uh, skilled opponents. You got the best way to feint is with the right because people are expecting me. You got to you got to make people think. You got to make yourself think you're going to throw it. I got to think I'm going to throw it right. Change the levels. Throw it here. Change the levels. Throw it here. Then I change levels. Come back the top. You got. You got to be. You got to be so convinced that you think you're actually going to do it. How much do you loop with your overhand punch? I only do that when I when I uh, change levels like that. I really like changing levels here. Hit that body. Hit that body. And then I change levels here. And I come back to the top there. Are you leaning at all when you're down there, or you yeah. just drops right down? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Why don't you uh, hold that point first of contact, and I'll see if I can touch your head with my other hand to see if you're out of range. As I'm changing levels. Then I. Yep. Perfectly out of range. Yeah, nice. Awesome, man. Uh, one last thing. Can you show us a few uppercuts? That's my favorite punch, the uppercut. Uppercuts, yeah, I like those guys. Uppercuts, and who's good at doing it is Chuck Liddell coming back. You know, he did get knocked out by uh, Rashad. Rashad, using an uppercut but, when you he was know, throwing the overhand, yeah. One of them was going to get knocked out, but it's the same thing. It's a real quick with, with your hips in. Too many people do this. You don't, you don't want to get that chin too far away from your body. If you want to cock back and throw that uppercut, bring your body down with you. Bring your body so you have your hips to explode it back up. Nice. So it's here, it's not here. Oh. here it's I mean, I'll do as hard as I can. That's all hard. It's not going to hurt me as bad as if I'm here. Push my hips. Nice. So you drop your hips a bit before you shoot the uppercut? Absolutely, yeah. Talk to us about the lead side weapon with the uppercut. Lead side here? Yeah, how do you get that? That one's out? actually longer. I use that one when I'm. You know, because this hand's out here. So I'll use that one more as a setup. So I'm here, you know, you come back on it. Yeah, I use my right one as a power when we're in here in combat. But I use the left. I use the left more so setup because you can get longer. So it's not as much power because I'm getting away from my body. Do you, uh, do you um, throw it naked, mainly not off the jab? Or straight I like going, yeah, like three lefts. I like going like jab, hook, hook up, and big right. Jab, with the same right. hand. One, two, three, left, four. Left, left, left. Diaz is good at that kind of stuff too. Using that left, left, left weapon. Left, left, bang. Hooking off the jab, or cutting off yeah. the jab. Let's see some of the. So it's, it's jab, hook, hook, bang. Oh, right. Let's see that yeah. combination. And you do step a little bit on each one. Get a little bit of power. And step to target. It's all for the, it's all for the And what about after that? Are you going to get out of the way? Are you going to pivot and try to double jab? Or are you going to try to... Get out of the way or finish it. If you have a hurt, then you just come in. I like finishing out something like that, a four-punch combo with the kid. And I like, I like coming here. And then, I'm just got the technical edge. i got to get a hold of him. 
I can't get hit as much. I definitely got to move around and set up my power. Kind of like Diaz, uh, who you're much more powerful, obviously, but... Uh, I didn't move. Yeah. See, I, when I threw a punch, you knew it was coming. How are you going to actually take the fight to come and make it... I've, I've changed my training. I've changed my part. training big time with okay. my Muay Thai coach and my boxing coach. It's actually gotten to the point where my Muay Thai coach told me that the commentators don't say that Oh, we have a new fighter. It's not the totally new fighter that you can put coaching. Good. Does that, does that mean that when you're in the center of the ring, you're not going to shuffle in and step in? You're actually going to move back a little and show different angles? Yeah, yes. Yeah, showing different angles, moving, using the feet a little bit more, moving around. 